Welcome back. <coughs> All right. Um, before we move to our next subject item, where are we? Are we still in any more questions on the Unified Land Development Code? We post we can tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. We'll come back to that. But I do, I mean, it's going to be important, I will say this, it's going to be important that staff has information as far as what our timeline is, as far as what we want to, when we want to get this accomplished, and then, of course, as we're moving through the, up toward the budgeting process, we're also going to know, need to know how that's going to affect the budget. So that's what we're planning for. So that's good. We'll come back to that. All right. Uh, Splos 8. This uh, <coughs> dovetails into the comments made by Harrison. You go on the, this page have the information concerning the uh, actual collections. <coughs> and you also have this breakdown on the timeline and as was pointed out earlier uh, your date for the election is November so being able to consider that timeline discuss projects discuss when you intend to submit uh, a request from the municipalities on their projects and a Assuming that y'all agree on everything, we won't have to have other meetings, but we just have to go ahead. And you think? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Sorry, let's go ahead and plan on that. I, as I understood from the day, all we got to do is keep it simple. And that's that's right. fine. <laughs> so anyway, that's the dates that we're talking about. Um, the projected list. I have had conversation with... Uh, George Page concerning a request from the uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, I've had conversation with uh, Sheriff Paul concerning a uh, request for the Sheriff's Department, which I anticipate to be only uh, vehicles. Um, <coughs> and uh, then, as I mentioned earlier this morning, work. We work with Public Works, Stephanie and I, to follow up on the SPLOS request in the next SPLOS for uh, equipment. Now, one of the questions, and this is going to be something y'all want to discuss with <clears throat> Mike when he gets here in a few minutes, and Mr. Chairman, you may want to begin that discussion beforehand. And that is that your regular SPLOS has included paving projects in the past because there was no T SPLOS. Now that you have your T SPLOS, and I think it's referenced here that it's probably going to be difficult to use equipment and expenditures and labor expenditures out of that T SPLOS. So it's also going to require y'all to give consideration to your LMIG matching funds that you're going to need to come up with. Are you going to put that in SPLOST? Are you going to look to do that from the general fund? If you're going to put it in SPLOST, we're, we're already talking about $135,000, 36000 Harrison may let us bump it a little bit, but he's not going to let us bump it very much as far as... Uh, revenue. <coughs> so now that's county wide. You know, uh, yours is, your county should be thinking uh, 63, 63 million. Yeah. If there are projects Ooh. that are off the top projects, what those projects are, what would they be? Uh, off the top projects have to be projects that impact <coughs> the entire community, the entire county. Uh, i.e. a jail, mm -hmm. which we've done in the past. Question uh, has been before y'all concerning the uh, historical courthouse. How much are you going to put on that project? Uh, is that an off-the-top project? Um, those are points that I think y'all are going to have to give some consideration for. <coughs> Well, 
and I agree, but um, let, let's let's address the timeline first from the standpoint. When will when do you anticipate that the county will have your project lists and requests available for the commissioners? Uh, I anticipate having that by no later than mid May. Okay. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is because I want to call the meeting as, as soon as we can. I have no problem with going ahead and picking a day on the calendar at, as far out as the end of May if we want to do that so that we can go ahead and, and put a date on the calendar as well for the city so that they'll have a timeline that they're working to so they'll have their project ready. I don't anticipate it being <coughs> later than that. It could be earlier, but I don't anticipate it being later. Any later than that. Okay. All right. Last week, last week of May. Last week of May, I think we'll be fine. I don't see a problem with that. So, if we can go ahead and get that on a calendar and go ahead and um, get notification prepared to get out to the cities, <coughs> that way they also will have a target to be working for to have their projects ready as well. When have you traditionally notified them of the county estimate of how much? When we send out the letter. The letter. Not then, I would agree with that. Yeah, that and so they're designing their projects around that number and not otherwise. And there has been, previously there's been, oh, we think there'll be more than what you projected. And we, as you know, we've always tried to be very conservative in that estimate. Joe's going to be formulated. Mark asked the question about when we start identifying those projects. Well, that's what I was getting at. We're going to have all of those projects <coughs> identified and listed um, prior to the mid-May, um, and they would include whatever commissioner's request may be. It would include um, any, as he said, any off-the-top projects, the historical courthouse. You know, I... I'll say this right up front, and maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a big fan of off-the-top projects unless it truly is a real need. Uh, so I prefer that we stay away from off-the-top projects. Um, we will know um, here, I say shortly, I mean, you know, within a couple of months, I hope that we'll be able to be close enough that we can begin to get some maybe some better budget numbers on where we're at with the historical courthouse. Probably by this time we will know uh, what that number may be. And then to me, uh, right now, there's a lot of projects in Lowndes County that is important. But me personally, there's not one any more important than that historical courthouse. At, so, the next, at your next meeting, you will be discussing the selection of uh, an architect. That will start the ball rolling as far as that estimate. Correct. And there is um, there's a preliminary best estimate wish list behind the SPLOST 8 um, cover sheet. That is just um, some of the staff's initial, um, as well as um, Chad doing a little facility work estimate already. These are broad numbers. If you see this totals already, um, we're at 66.3 million initially. Um, public Works is probably going to increase. Well, all of these right now are, this is what we would like to have. Gotcha. Uh, so, we, everybody I've talked to, I've said, okay, tell me what you think, but that doesn't mean you're going to get it. It's going to be tied to the limitation on the funds sure. and the direction y'all give us. Sure. Now, I have had comments made from the commissioners concerning uh, projects like uh, community center, uh, expansion of the library, uh, Southside Library, yes. I think it was. Um, <clears throat> so those are the projects that you guys are going to have to decide which of these y'all want, which of these you can politically and reasonably endorse. Yeah, and I think that we need to be, commissioners, I'm charging you with this, this is something that we need to begin to 
develop that list very quickly because along with that, with some situations, uh, we do have some historical numbers that we can fall back on, on for example, uh, community centers, however, like Southside Library expansion, we're going to need to know what that is so we know what that number is going to be so that we'll be able to utilize it. And, and that question, and Commissioner Evans can maybe address this, I have not, I've got that from Commissioner Evans, and I don't know what the regional library board is proposing or if that's South that's a request. That's a request because there is a number of children that really need tutoring. There is an area that is definite need. They have the land to add on that they can provide the service for the community. And that is something that is definitely needed. And that's been a request for years. But at their meeting last month, that they really expressed the need. They have someone to do the tutoring, but they don't have any uh, facility. It, it hasn't been discussed with right. them. Is this primarily from the South Side um, boosters, uh, and the boosters and the community? Okay, as opposed to <coughs> the, no, he what? haven't. He and I, uh, I called him to talk with, him, but he wasn't here, okay. so I don't know whether they have expressed this to him or not. <coughs> gotcha. The things on the other mm -hmm. so, and I think that it's, it's really <coughs> definitely needed for that community. So that would have to be, as you just pointed out. You got to find out what square footage, what type of room, <coughs> uh, usage, etc. Yeah. Another issue is um, engineering has worked in three different options. If we were to take the remaining paving list, that's stuff that's closer to ready to go that did not make the T spots list. Um, if you all wanted to include additional paving projects, or the total that's been included for this um, spreadsheet purpose is just the LMIG match, which is $2.5 million. Um, so you'll need to talk about how you want to handle that. There has been some pushback from citizens in other communities that had a regular government SPLOS like us, um, where they've not supported the new SPLOS referendum because there were not Red Street and Bridge projects on there. So that's something to consider as far as the public's interest. Now, the LMIG match being included would cover road, street, and bridge improvements, so that would still be part of that campaign. It's just how you want to reallocate the rest of that money to include additional paving projects or just let t spots be the mechanism for that for now. Well, again, I think what we're going to need to look at is, is allow Mike the time to take a look at what these projects are, what the requests have been, not only from citizens, but certainly from the need of high maintenance areas um, that needs to be addressed, um, and then decide how far his dollars are going to go from the standpoint of the, the dis <clears throat> discretionary funding that will get that 25% off T-SPLOS, how much of that will be available, how you can utilize that, the increase in LMIG, how that can be in utilized, and then what else is needed. And then it, along with Paige's line, uh, I agree that if you don't include some roads and bridges, you want community support. So the key is to try to touch as many members of the community as you possibly can some way to affect a change in their life where they will support SPLOS A. So I think that that's going to be important. I know that you know, the initial thought is, is that, well, we don't need any money for <coughs> roads because we have T-SPLOS. Keeping in mind that T-SPLOS has identified particular projects. Those are going to be done. But we still have a lot of projects in the county that, that needs to be done. We still have a current list that we have to work through. So, there's going to be some give and take there as far as what we'll be able to do. So, if Mike maybe, and when do you think Mike will be here shortly? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then maybe he can shed some light on it. I mean, he's got a list here, and he can kind of show us some of that and what the importance of those are, and then we can begin to look at some of those numbers. There are some roads here in District 1 that I really would like to think about more improvement to those roads than putting millions of dollars in paving that some of the, oh, there's a couple other roads that need improvement 
that definitely cost that amount because there's some really good food here. Most of the money doing that to improve the money. Elmick typically does resurfacing for the most part. Mm -hmm. That's where it normally goes. To Local maintenance and improvement grant. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those type of things. Now, along with what Miss Evans is saying, and and you know, we've had a abnormal amount of rainfall this year, so we've had a lot of our dirt roads that have been affected. <coughs> but I believe also that we need to take a look at some funding, and we'll probably have to get this funding number from Public Works. But to look at some of these roads, these dirt roads, that we know that we probably will not be able to afford to get these roads paid, roads paid, but they need improvements. There's areas where roads need to be built up. It means, you know, putting the money in there to bring in dirt, new dirt, build the road up, put some ditches in it, some additional cross drains and those sort of things to go ahead and fix some of these problem areas that we just have consistently when we get heavy rain. We kind of address them from the standpoint of need, but I think that there's a way that we can identify some of these areas and make these, even the rural dirt roads, make them uh, easier to travel, easier to maintain, and really will kind of reduce some emergency work on the county standpoint when some of these roads become impassable because of uh, ditches cutting, you know, rainwater cutting across uh, the roads and washing roads out and those sort of things. You won't be able to fix all of them, but you should be able to address a lot of them because there are some areas we know that could have some attention. Yeah, that is my biggest concern. Just fix that. We also have had, I'll, I'll go ahead and bring this up while we're kind of waiting on Mike. We've had this discussion already, but you know, we do have an issue with some private roads in the community and it's hard for the citizens to understand the difference between a private road and a public road. Uh, but we're going to need to look at some guidelines as we move forward to be sure that how we address a public road, how, I mean, I'm sorry, a private road, and how that private road can be brought into the public inventory. We're already deep into that. We've got some information that hopefully we'll be able to share with everybody as soon as that gets ironed out. Um, but Mr. Pritchard has got some background on that that maybe he can kind of share some information on where we're at right now with that issue. Uh, we, it's uh, one tab behind oh, the yeah, okay. one. But, hey Robin, come on in. Um, you have a breakdown on three uh, or four of the most discussed roads. You also have... Uh, it's in, under the infrastructure policy. Type. Okay. You also have a breakdown of recommendations. Have a seat up there. So maybe, do we want to jump that far ahead since it's in there, or do we want to just... Get to that when we're ready. Probably some other stuff you want to go through first before you get to that. Okay, that'd be fine. All's call. Yeah, okay, that'd be fine. Um, but the, those issues and, uh, concerning recommendations on what policy thoughts you might consider. Now these are strictly from engineers. They have not passed the litmus test of the attorneys. So I can assure you there'll be much discussion about these before it reaches all the subject. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, while, while you're discussing that or, or considering that, um, I'd like to go back and let Robin make some comments on the topic that Commissioner Evans brought up about road buildups. Robin, you were involved over the years with uh, the process that we had like, 18, 20 years ago of road buildup. Those uh, roads were determined because, as you pointed out, 
it was, they were not anticipated to be paid. But tell them what that consisted of in those road build-ups. Well, basically, the road build-up list was roads that weren't going to get paid, but they needed would like to be good dirt roads. So we went in and corrected any drainage issues and build up the road to where it was just a really good dirt road. Dirt road. And we had yeah. a list and we prioritized the list and we just kept moving down the list. You had cross drain pipes and you had side drain pipes. Right. Driveway pipes, cross drains, <coughs> you know, created ditches if we needed ditches just to allow for the drainage and build the road up with a good sand base material. Is that above the water table? So, Robin, is this, is this been an ongoing process that you continue to look at as roads develop, or are you just trying to work through an older list? Well, we've kind of, we used to have years ago, 20 years ago, we used to have a construction crew that built roads. But over that 20 years, those positions got deleted. So now with us doing the preparing the roads for paving, most of our resources are focused on that. So we didn't have the resources to continue to build up, but on the other hand, we had a lot of dirt available to us because we had pits, but now we're out of dirt. We have like in reserve maybe <laughs> a year's worth of dirt that I can keep guarding like it's dirt. Like so you're saying we're not as dirty as it used to be? <laughs> <laughs> the Williams pit was our primary, has been our primary right. pit. Uh, and as Robin said, she's guarding it like Fort Knox. And I have encouraged her to do that because this is, we're, we're very, very close to being out of that resource. What's well, very close? How long? Less than a year. year. So at the end of that, you can look for a more expensive cost to road maintenance, road construction. You're going to be paying much more from those suppliers for that material if we do not locate other <coughs> available sites and not everybody is anxious to have those pits. Right. It used to be a long, long time ago, uh, people said, come and get all you want. And by the way, when you get through, how about slope the sides down so I got a little pond here. Yeah. Those days are dead and gone. They don't have to. <coughs> well, the pit we have that we bought probably, what was about 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. We just bought the dirt and it expires. So what I'm doing right now is in, when it's raining and we can't work on the roads, I'm hauling dirt out of the pit that's left and stockpiling it because I didn't want time to run out and then yeah. still have the dirt. So I'm taking the dirt and stockpiling. <laughs> and the idea, <laughs> years, you bought the dirt, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> The idea years ago was that Robin and Public Works wanted to have available resources on both the north end and the south end to eliminate the cost of hauling depending on where the projects were. Well, again, that becomes mm -hmm. much more difficult when we are down to as little amount of resources we have now. Now, the list you talked about we pretty well were working our way through that, and the position of the commissioners began to change. They wanted to put more into paving as opposed to road buildup. So the, the emphasis began to switch. Our resources began to be depleted because of the economy. You've already heard Stephanie say we're down 23 positions on our side of the lake. <coughs> Those positions have never been made back up. And what I've said to y'all before, the equipment was not replaced. We just kept using and using. So those are all difficult decisions to make. It's not just a matter of let's go find a piece of property. It's all of the other factors that are related to that. And, and I agree 100% with that. But I also don't believe we can neglect these 
dirt roads that either the folks never want them paved or we know that they're so far down the line that it's going to be years out before we get them paid. So my challenge to y'all is we need to figure out a way that we can get back into that road build-up program if that's what it is or something similar to that. I mean, if we don't, if, if we need to look at it, would, it, would we as the county be better off, just like we contract to do paving on roads, would we be better off to look at contracting for doing a, our build-up? on our areas and put you know put those processes out to bid as well so we need to begin to move in that direction because just as miss evans said we do have a lot of roads that has given us trouble uh, and a lot of them that we've looked at are, are roads that basically as, as mr weisenbaker said that, that the water's at the level of the road so you can fix a lot of those problems by doing a build-up if you need to, and it will help us with a lot of these um, with the flooding waters and flood yeah. situations. I think a lot of the problems we have on some of the roads that even are level with the water, you have easements you need that property owners just won't give up. And no matter how high you build the road, if you don't have somewhere to send the water, yeah. it's just not going to go. You can't build it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Road, then, example. Oh, there's a, I'd have to look for sure. Well, I do think, and Joe, your challenge is, is to look and see how we can address these <coughs> problems that we do have and what is going to be the best way to approach it. I, I know there's been some discussion about the Williams Pit and that it's, we've about exhausted that resource and that we need to be looking at another location just to be able to get dirt. So I know that you're working on that situation as well. Um, but I don't want, I don't want us um, to neglect the dirt roads as well. Not for, and I say for whatever reason, but <coughs> certainly finances pay, plays a big part in it. But if we do need to take some paving resources to make sure that these other roads are good for those citizens that lives on them, then that's what we need to consider as well from the standpoint of commission. We have a responsibility, I feel like, to address that, that, that concern too. Those options will be before you in the budget. Okay. Mm -hmm. and if whatever, we, whatever the recommendations are, obviously it will be up to y'all to decide where you want to apply those resources. Yes. And so would the, I mean, would, could I ask the commissioners in, in agreement that we kind of need to move in that direction to kind of get some information about what it's going to take to do a build-up program uh, and address the needs that we have so that Joe's can, you know, if, if y'all don't want to do it, then there's no need in him moving forward with that. Let's not waste his time. No, we I totally agree. Robin, yeah. well, do you have a, what, what's, have a plan B for after this year? Is there, is there already a location that you're working on as far as, because I'm sure we're paying a fraction of what it would cost to actually buy dirt at fair market value or whatever, so is there? Well, we did test holes a lot trying to find something, but so at this point we haven't found anything. I know where there's a 98 acre track <coughs> there on Valdale Road. But we got two pieces of property that's in this it's got the same vein of soil that runs from Williams Pit to the LAS that's on that same vein and we're just trying to get in touch with the property owner because they're not on, they're not local we're trying to get in touch with that property owner to get permission to do a test over there we almost got shot in our last turn Good <laughs> job. Yeah. yeah. We have you that gun strong on Do the you uh, strictly buy the dirt? Best with Lowell County and buy the land. Well, the first pit that we had, we bought the land. Then when we got extra acreage on that, we just bought the dirt. We just leased the land. Yeah. They end up going there. We leased the land and robbed the dirt. We don't finish it off. No. <laughs> well, I was just going to say. If, if, if that can be built into the Sploss Road number, I'm a little concerned. We've never had a T Sploss before. Voters tend to think of roads when they think of Sploss. Nothing else on this list really matters to them. 
they because they ride on roads. That's all that matters to them. So if this, you know, you had about 20 million in this last splash, and all of a sudden that sinks down to about 3 million, you got a bunch of stuff that's, that you're spending more money on, it could have an impact on the election. So, you, so anything that really needs to come toward roads needs to be in here, as well as the roads that aren't going to be paid through two spots. They don't even understand the difference in all these spots. No, Keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, they're going to vote for an East Sploss in March, and they're going to swear that's your Sploss. Mm -hmm. They have no clue. Yeah. The voters just can't decipher all these Sploss votes. Yeah. Mike, we have uh, discussed while waiting on you and Chad the options that you have proposed. Option one and option two uh, and three concerning uh, SPLOS and LMIG. Do you want to discuss that? Um, we, we currently have uh, about 70 uh, two or 73 projects uh, that are on our project list. And what I did is, um, in coming up with a SPLOS 8 list, in a potential list, is, you know, like the 20 million that we have now, I made a 20 million dollar list. And then knowing that, you know, that may, there may not be 20 million dollars, I made a couple of, uh, you know, a 15 million dollar list and a 10 million dollar list. But, uh, you know, realizing that that $10 million list, you know, we've got, uh, we got petitions on all those roads that are signed and ready to go. And, uh, and just about, uh, you know, on, on the $15 million list, uh, there's a lot of those roads that, that people are calling and asking about. So all of those are, you know, they're real good projects. They're projects that people are calling and asking about. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that, uh, Mr. Pritchard and I had discussed when we were putting together our uh, unconstrained list for peace loss was we didn't want to use a bunch of unconstrained money buying right away. So all of the uh, all of the roads that we have on our unconstrained list right now, we have 100% of the right away. We we're not going to need to buy any right away uh, because that's one of the things in peace loss is you got to buy a right away. And, that, and so uh, what we tried to put together was a list of roads that was you know, shovel, basically shovel-ready that we didn't have to go get right away on. And, and that's our plan. And I mean, you know, if, if uh, the unconstrained list is our list that we can, we can move in and out uh, projects. Uh, but I think it's the best, wise, best and wisest use of our money not to be buying right away uh, if we can when we got projects that we don't have to buy right away. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Next. Uh, y'all want to... Huh? Maybe on the side. I, I was going to ask, do y'all want to give any direction on this now, or do you want to do it when I mean, you put the SPLOS list together? Do you have direction for the staff now? Or yeah, I, what do y'all want to do? I, I think that we've got a few <clears throat> unanswered or not quite enough information for us to actually give direction at this time. Again, we need to we need to kind of make some decisions about um, what the roads are. I mean, you've got a list of them, just as you had said earlier. But do we need to do that now, or do we need to look at um, this issue with improving these dirt roads, or are we going to need some revenue to do that? And Mike, we were discussing that before you came in, and that was going back to the road build-up program on some of the dirt roads that we have. Is there going to have to be some expenditures that's going to need to be there? Commissioners? I think from a road, from a road and bridge standpoint, we, from the Swaths 8, we we'll probably need to spend at least 25% of whatever we're looking at on roads and bridges. Yeah, that puts you about 15, 16 million to that range. I, uh, we just got to have a little spend. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, it, it's 
we're, we're in a little bit of a difficult situation, I, I say with that. But we do have T-Splosh, which addressed a lot of our road issues. And there's some kind of along what you're saying, there's going to be a lot of citizens out there who said, well, I just voted for a penny that's going to take care of your roads. When in reality, it doesn't. I mean, it takes care of needs that we had that we would probably never be able to get done outside of our list of paving projects that we know that, as you said, we already have the right-of-ways and all of those and, so, and the petition so that we can move forward with them. So we got it's going to be a fine line balance, but I agree with you. There's a lot of folks out there that's going to want to say, where is my road at? And we certainly want to be able to tell them this is the plan to get your road done. But as we all know, we've talked about a lot of different roads in past plots that we're going to get paid, and we always do work toward that, but we always seem to come up short on getting those roads on that list completed and get them finished because of things such as $25 million shortfall in projected plus seven. You know, that affects a lot of those things greatly, so we just need to come up with that. I mean, if that's the direction we want to give the staff is to, to figure on 18 to 20 million dollars on roads and Splash 8, then we need to come up with that specific list that we want to, to work with. If it's less than that or more than that, we need to kind of do that. If you're prepared to do that. Well, my at this concern, time. as I said before, I know there's a lot of roads in the district that I represent that would never be paid because of the length of them, because of the right of way. But I do believe that they can be improved, and I know during the first couple of years that I was there, that was my request, and we went back and did a whole lot of work on those roads, and it really made a difference. And I'm sure that it would make a difference that we can improve some of those roads that really need help. Every time it's rain or sprinkle, they have problems. Robin, will you talk uh, briefly about, before we get into these the infrastructure, will you talk briefly about this plus request for public works? Well, as far as I had a list, of course, in the perfect world, but uh, most all the requests for public works from Spots is equipment. We've, um, you know, we got to have some, we've got to have some, some new stuff to work with. We've been operating this county for the past three weeks on two graders, and we finally got two new graders in with one sloper. <laughs> you know, so we've been straight shot. We got the dump trucks, all of them have a half a million miles. You know, so we if we do find a resource for some material up in Adel, we're like, ooh, Adel, we'll break down before we get there. <laughs> you know, um, the vegetation that we've got that handled this year as far as a lot of the boom mowing. The biggest concern that I have is for a barco to handle storm debris. Um, we're in like a 24 year age group on our barcode that's, you know, every day during the storm we're just constantly in the shop first and then work the second half of the day to make it. And I just think that we could be a lot more productive if we had new stuff to work with. It's not the stuff right now. Is that what you send out when there's uh, illegal dumping? Well, if it's a large pile, it just reaches yeah. over and the right mm -hmm. which is all good. And uh, during storms, the debris is too heavy to be handled by hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we use that to pick up the, the, the food and stuff. And um, I'm just, I told the county manager, I was afraid we were going to have one storm come through and be like, we couldn't help ourselves. You know, that's what I worry about. I really do just feel like if we could get this stuff, we could just at least start the production. And so I'm asking the question I know the answer to, but you have submitted all that request to Mr. Pritchard right. so he knows where it is. I have some in the regular budget and some in the Right. Okay. okay. Would, since we've already discussed this to some degree, uh, would y'all turn over to your infrastructure tab 